put a lid straight down. Oh, man. All right, Doc. So, so you've been practicing chiropractic for about as long as I've been alive. So, mm -hmm. really innovative chiropractor. You know, you're working a, a lot, lot of wear and tear on my body. <laughs> so you work with Palmer, and now you, you've been developing this table. And so, if you guys didn't see his new table, so he last time I was here, I don't think you had your custom tables yet. I think you were still using your original one. That's correct. Yeah. So he's got his custom tables now. Advanced chiropractic equipment. We'll stick the link below. So if you guys are PTs out there too, like this table is really awesome. You can do a lot of cool things with it. Um, I've got one in the office now, so Doc was, was kind enough to send me one, and I've been experimenting a lot with it. Uh, really, really enjoy the table, like being able to take the lumbar, you know, curve out of it and getting the pins in, it's a big time uh, difference maker, it's a game changer, really. Um, so Doc, so tell me about like how you got into that technique, like where you learned it, and then what it's been like kind of developing this and teaching other docs, you know, your technique, the Johnson technique. Yeah. Well, I, uh... I actually had it done on myself back in 1981 by a chiropractor in Austin named Russell Jansen. He's also a Palmer graduate. Oh man, I got some serious soft tissue tweaking going on in there. <laughs> Finish your story. <laughs> well, you feel that tightness in there? Mm -hmm. man. Start, yeah, start to ease up a little bit. You got some, some yeah, lesions in here from carrying the entire chiropractic game on your shoulders. Oh, man, man. no doubt. Wow. Including uh, having to shrug those, those haters off. <laughs> <laughs> so you were in Austin. Oh, so anyway, uh, this guy, he did, he called it a pull adjustment. It was on the old table that I used to have that had the marine top on it. And, uh, the very first time I had it done, I swear I thought I'd been run by a Mack truck. It hurt so bad. Uh, but I had had a compression fractures at T11, T12 in my lower thoracic spine that no chiropractic adjustment had ever been able to give me any relief on. And a week after he did his initial adjustment on me, for the first time in 20 years, I had no pain in my lower thoracic spine where I'd had all those injuries in high school that created those compression fractures and that was that's what I said well man can I come back up and do that again that felt good after the soreness wore off yeah. so I just went back and he did it again and I ended up buying his practice in Austin and he had three of those tables so I acquired three of those tables simultaneously and started doing the technique back in 1981 so I've been doing this technique for over 40 years now and so those original tables, they weren't necessarily designed for that. Like, no, they weren't. Yours is designed for it. They, they were called inertial extensilizers because they had a bounce feature to the table. So the table would go down and it would come back up and then stop and bounce while the hip bones were still pinned in at the iliac crest. So you got a little of that decompression at the lower lumbar spine mm -hmm. from just the jar there, the, the inertia force. Okay. So... Uh, that's what it was originally designed for, but he took it a step further and did the whole spine adjustment. And, and then you took it another step further, and then I, making a table yeah. specifically for that. Yeah, yeah. I and worked, popularizing it worldwide. I uh, worked with Hill Laboratories engineers for over a year designing this table and putting all the features on it that I had wanted over those 40 years that I had been doing it on the inertial extensilizer. Well, 35 now. This table's been out, what, since 2000? 18? 18, yeah. Yeah. Okay. December, I think, 2018. But we didn't have the first ones manufactured out to our docs until 2019. Okay, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Awesome. It so, just, it just, it's steady the art for XYZ adjusting. I adjust the Y axis on that. That's what I had it designed for, and that's what it's good for. Okay. That's what I use it for anyway. Turn your head to the right. Mm -hmm. Now, and you had a really big, busy practice in Austin, right? Oh yeah, I was seeing about 150 patients a day <laughs> by myself. And then I had three other associates at that time too that were seeing patients in there as well. But that was back in the old days when insurance companies were paying claims and back in the 80s, you know, that's before you were born probably. The Mercedes 80s? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're the cool chiropractor on YouTube now. I'm the old grandpa. <laughs> Am I cool? Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. I think you're cool. I think you're cool. 
I was born in December '83. So yeah, you were you've literally been cracking spines longer than I've been alive. Yeah, it's amazing. Think about all the people you've helped and all the all the people you've killed over the years. Well, and that's that's something too that I want to talk to you about in the the little interview thing that we're going to do the exclusive interview on what my future is because I'm not ever going to get out of chiropractic in its totality. People have been talking about my demise one way or the other for a long time, retirement or death. Still here. Yeah. <laughs> still here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Still going, still loving it. So you were from, and you were in California for a while, is that correct? Yeah, that's where I met Renee, actually. Okay. Actually, uh, how I met Renee was I was firing about five employees at one time out there oh, for not filing claims. Dropping the hammer. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. So I was interviewing for an office manager. And Renee came in for the interview, and I took five hours in the interview with her, just trying to make her cry to see if she would. <laughs> did it work? No. No, I didn't she cry. Did. Five hours later, she said, you gonna hire me or not? <laughs> <laughs> make a move. Yeah. <laughs> so, my respect started right then for her okay. and her work ethic was second to none. So when did you come to Houston? We came back here. See, I, I'm from here, so okay. We uh, well, you practiced. Here. I practiced here early on in 1981. We came back in 2012. Back in 2012, okay. yeah, and started this. And that's when you became the Houston, your Houston care right? Yep. So it hadn't really been that long. No. Not as long as I've been in Albuquerque. Not too long. And so, tell me about what started the YouTube stuff. Well, actually, my son and I were out shopping one day we were at home depot and he came walking and he goes hey dad you should do youtube and i didn't even know what youtube was back in 20, had, had he seen other chiropractors doing no it or no other... he had never seen any chiropractor but he saw because i was other gonna say people. you're like the originator of chiropractor right right but uh so you talk about being a you said you're being old but like you're the first person to like take that medium to that that young platform yeah because mm-hmm. he said hey dad people like seeing what they're buying and what you're selling is your hands and your technique so I did my first YouTube video on Renee, actually. And it ended up getting like 4,000 views in a week or so. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and then uh, we just kept doing them from that point forward. He said, you know, people like knowing what they're buying and just show them what you're selling, which is your hands and sure. chiropractic. And seeing how people's results are. And, exactly, in video. real life, because we don't edit any of our videos. Yeah. It's all raw treatment experience. Oh, man. Right, yeah, boy. I got several of them in my cervical spot. Yeah, boy. Mm. Pain in the neck. Yeah, no kidding. I've heard that one plenty. <laughs> you are? Yeah. <laughs> pain in the ass, pain in the neck, you name it. I'm in pain. I'm just going to hold that to the face. Yeah. I'm in your hands. Do what you will. Feels better, though, already. The tension's going out on my left side big time. You know, and uh, this is an interesting point, just talk, because, you know, I talk a lot about science in my videos and in the scientific basis for the treatment that we're providing. You have a underlying scientific basis for the soft tissue work that you're doing, mm-hmm. I believe, too, from my education from Dr. Dan Murphy, the soft tissue injury and repair. You know, you're elongating the the fascia and the uh, muscle spindles and the ligaments, which is all uh, plastic changes that occur and remodeling that occurs in the tissues, right? Right, absolutely. So you're breaking up fibrotic adhesions and scar tissues and and then remodeling the tissue, is that correct? Yep. That's what I've always got out of it. So neighbor paths, like Oakley Smith was actually a chiropractor, he was a chiropractic student. He was, he, he worked with Dee Dee Palmer and I don't remember this from chiropractic history, but they branched off in like 1905. And so at the time you had these three prevailing theories on, you know, vascular neurological entrapments. So you had the osteopaths who had bone on blood vessel, right. chiros bone on nerve, nerve. Mm-hmm. and then napropaths decided it was ligatites that were pinching nerves. Well, I think it's a combination of all those things. So lig- ligatites turned out to not really be a thing, but the soft tissue, the idea, the fascia is what we later yeah. figured out what we were calling it. Yeah. Um, can be compressive of nerves and blood and vasculature. 
So well, yeah, it locks up the normal joint motion too, which is when anytime you affect joint integrity you're affecting neurological integrity of the spine and so later of course we learned that all those things are always together you right. can't have one without the other right that's true so you, you don't get blood without nerve or nerve without blood that's because true. you know nerves supply tone to the blood vessels and blood vessels supply blood to the nerves that's right so and all the, those and the nerves control the blood together. vessels exactly tension the, the tone of the yeah of the, the, the actual vessels sympathetic yeah. versus parasympathetic mm -hmm. So it all works together in the enlightenment pre-scientific era. Those were the campaign theories, obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, and so people talk about this or that. And like, well, there was no medicine. When was, when was insulin first probably like 1920, something like that, 1919 or something. Yeah. So there was no medicine at all at the time. Right. And penicillin wasn't commercially available until like 1941 or something. Well, and one of the things I admire about you is you have developed your own technique within that as well, which you know, I think there's very few living chiropractors that I know have actually developed a technique and are using different techniques than what most of them are. And you're one of those, that one of the leaders actually in our profession. You've got how many subscribers to your YouTube channel now? I've got a few. Yeah. I've <laughs> got a few. Yeah. He I mean, surpassed us a long time ago. <laughs> and like you, you know, like, there are no such thing as completely original ideas. It's being able to recognize a good idea and make it better, right? Yeah. Like, so that's something you've done, and that's something like, you know, all, all the stuff that we've done too. Or, I mean, ancient bone setting goes back to Galen and Hippocrates. Hippocrates, right? even, yeah. So, you know, a lot of these techniques have existed in India and, you know, the Orient. Yeah, all, all kinds of techniques. But now in the scientific era, the, those things, they're self evident, right? Some things you don't need studies on. Like if something's self-evident, I know that a rock breaks a window. Right. I don't need to do a research paper on it. I don't need an RCT. Like it's self-evident. So same thing with somebody that has less pain or somebody that moves better. Those are self-evident. And those ancient techniques of bone setting, you know, even before ADD, even before right. AT still, they're self-evident. They work. Right. The question is, as our scientific understanding gets better, who and where to apply it to and for what conditions? You know, like you always talk about, now that you know, we understand radiculopathies and disc entrapments. Now it makes sense, like you said, to go along the Y axis. Right. So you wouldn't go rotational for something that needs decompression. Right. And like you said, a lot of your patients come and they said just instinctively, I just, I feel like I need this. Yes. You know? Their yeah. body's telling them something yeah. on a subconscious level. That's right. And you're listening to them and saying, hey, maybe your body's right. Maybe we, that's what we should do. Well, and you know, science is the first thing about it is observation. And I observed for 40 years me doing this technique on people with different conditions like herniated discs and cervical sprain strains even from car accidents right. all that stuff and i observed the results of my treatment because i did pre and post adjustment numbers on sure. everybody for 40 years and that's the first phase of any science is right. observation right and you know we learned the science in chiropractic college as well as our postgraduate education sure in soft tissue, in anatomy, physiology, neuropis, neuropathophys, and uh, everything, all the systems. We learned all the science. So when you apply the known science to what we're doing, that also makes sense. Like you're talking about, it's inherently innate, basically. Yeah. So it's interesting. So like some of the things I think, um, you know, we were talking about why do some people get aggressive towards other people, and there's, there's an intrinsic bias, and me and my wife have talked about this in the past. So you're a southern guy, right? Yep. So you have a little draw. <laughs> I always wonder what the reaction from these elitist type folks would be if you had a British accent. Yeah, I don't know. Right? You would be saying the exact same words, you know, speaking in neurological and yeah. physiological same sense. terms, yeah. But for whatever reason, people yeah. want to associate southern accents with, you know. Take bills. Being simple, right? Right. Yeah. When you're really saying complex things and having complex ideas. Right. So it's very interesting. If you look at every documentary, they always have a British or an Australian person. True. Because people assume that if they have a British accent, I mean, look at Russell Brand's channel right now. The guy's got like 5 million subscribers. They so articulate differently. If you say that those words, but fancier, now all right. of a sudden it's academic, it's right. smart. And I wonder how much of those kind of biases go into the way that people view other people. And that's, you know, a lot of times people need to check their own biases in the mirror. Why do I feel disdain or why am I jealous or whatever all those other things are? Maybe it's me. Maybe it's not him, right? Maybe they feel me, make me feel a certain way about where I am in life that you're helping people, that you're coming up with new techniques instead of trying to undermine you or, you know. Yeah, well, I've had to get some pretty thick skin over the years because I've taken several shots from our profession. And, yeah. You know, people that 
think I'm going to kill somebody doing my technique. Right, and you've been doing it for 40 years, 40 and not years. one person is even alleged of being injured, let alone right. had a malpractice case. There it is, the proof is in the pudding. And what's yeah. your malpractice? 2400, 2500 a year? Yeah, like that. yeah. So anybody who's in the medical field, it, it pays their dues. Like my surgeons say they pay 80, 100, 120,000. Mm -hmm. So insurance companies aren't in the habit of losing That's money. Right. That's right. So and your actuarials are pretty accurate. Yeah. So our rates wouldn't be so low if this wasn't safe. That's right. So you can hear these, and then they'll use the reverse anecdotes. They'll say, well, these are just anecdotes. These people feel better. Mm -hmm. Well, the anecdotes of you saying the people were hurt are the same level of evidence. You're just saying that. And most of the time, you're hearing somebody else's story, and then they take it under their own. Like, oh, my second cousin's third buddy had something that happened. Well, that's why I did pre and post orthopedic checks, leg checks, and pre and post numbers to evaluate those things objectively, too, right. subjectively and objectively, right. to evaluate a person's progress. I right. mean, so, I mean, it's, it's, I'm not just saying stuff to hear my lips move. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, That's funny. To spew out my southern accent to people who don't want to learn. And where are you from originally? Southern Illinois, which is really where I picked up this southern accent. Interesting. I grew up there. So it's more of a Midwest, Midwest accent it, than anything. It is more of a southern Midwest, yep. Southern Illinois. Interesting. Do I have an accent? No. Not really. <laughs> That's why you're cooler. <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons. I never picked up the New Mexican accent. Now, would you explain what this is doing to, to our viewers? Because yeah, it does they, a couple they would probably interest It depends on that. what I'm doing. So so if I'm doing it with motion, depending on what muscle I'm at, like you said, it's like a maybe a massage gun or vibrational aspect. So it's tricking the muscle into thinking it's shorter than it should be. Right. So it elongates. And there's occasionally, if you're really getting specific, then you can move a bone like an activator. So. When you're affecting proprioception too, right? Right. Of the tissues. Right. And, and you and can't separate neurology. them from each other either. No, you can't. So, so yeah, oh, typically yeah. neurological inhibition. Wow. He needs a hammer on your shoulder, honey. <laughs> That's right. Renee's That's had a horrible left shoulder for years. We finally got her over that. Every once in a while, it'll still flare up. You know, I got all this soft tissue tightness, I think, from just bending over adjusting patients for 40 years doing this sense. stuff. It's also why your lats are so big, too, man. <laughs> Pulling on people. Yep. Yeah, I've developed those neural pathways and muscle memory over time, which Honest. makes it look easier than it actually is. Right. And it's not just the neural pathways, like, so then, then what happens is the muscles are more efficient, and then mm -hmm. the ligaments get stronger, and then your bones are actually more dense. And your body and brain adapts to everything. Yeah, to everything. Yeah. So I bet if we looked at your insertion sites where your lats tie in, they're like, the <laughs> bone is like really thick, you know? <laughs> Killing my thumbs. My thumbs, we have x-rays that are like visibly almost, tw the bones are almost twice as thick as they were when I was in chiro school. Wow. So my hands and wrists have actually gotten a lot thicker. From, from yeah, doing this? Pushing or, on people all yeah, pushing on people, yeah, with my thumbs. Yeah, I had to quit doing that because my joints in my thumbs started aching and the started place. looking like pancake flippers. <laughs> Shrug that shoulder up. Oh, man. And drop it down and shrug it up. And drop it down, good. It hurts so good. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, you really have to do this stuff to soft tissues to get this kind of change. Isn't that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Because you're not going to get the same kind of change without getting in there deep and affecting tissues themselves. Right. Well, all problems are unique. So sometimes people only have spinal issues, yeah. right? And you clear the spine and that's good. Sometimes they have rib or soft okay. tissue. And you adjust the entire body. So you do ribs and sternum and everything too. Well, they radiate um, out into the adjacent joints. And not everybody does, of course. Yeah. You know, there's all kinds of different flavors. There's, yeah, there's sure. Atlas onlys. And right. Activator onlys and Thompsons and yeah. Gonsteads. And, and I think all those techniques have their place. Yeah, they all work for a certain yeah, patient they, population. They do. So the, the yeah. point is finding the right patient population for the right yeah. person. Specificity. Yeah. Hooking the right chiropractor up with the right patient. Exactly. Turn your head to the left all the way. Two times. Two times. Go a little further. Go through. A little further. A little more. Good. Yeah. Back to center. Go left again. Mm -hmm. Go left again. Yeah. There we go. That's better. Well, let's go to We're the right. We're still getting some kink right down that lower cervical area there. Because I herniated that disc down C6. There. Yes. That's exactly it. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah. Whew, baby. Okay, look left again. That was better. Wow.
you head towards me? The straight lateral portion. Yeah, and that's the cool thing about the technique that you've developed. You've learned a lot just doing this yep. on just, people over yep. the years that you've been practicing. All the different too. presentations. Yeah. And just kind of keeping track of them and what's helping right. who. So you're observing, you're practicing science along the way too. Exact same way, yep. And then you see the patterns that start right. right? Yep. All right, look left again. Still pinching there? Or is that bad? A little bit, not as bad. I just still feel tight down there, but not as bad as it was. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Man, I've been needing this. <laughs> Look, that's good for me. That was easier. Yep. Yeah. That was a lot easier, actually. A little more. <laughs> shrug that shoulder up just a little bit. <laughs> Stronger than I thought. <laughs> Back down, you just threw me off like I was nothing. <laughs> That old man strength. Man. <laughs> it's that grown man strength is what that is. Yeah. All right, look left again. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Good job. Cool. <laughs> it's nice for us to get treatment on ourselves every <laughs> once in a while, too. Exactly. All right, let's go in your stomach. Okay. So, like, right through here is where you're feeling that tension? Well, I, yeah, up in the traps and rhomboids, and then I get it down to my lower thoracic in the paraspinals oh, as yeah, well. You have the, uh, that, where I have those compression muscle. fractures, yeah. The muscles are going to guard in there. Bent forward, twisting on this table all the time. And you've got a couple guys coming that are in Palmer right now that are going to come work with you, right? Yeah, Tristan and Jeremy are up at Palmer College of Chiropractic getting their DC degree right now. Which one is the one that runs the meme account? The what now? The, the, the Cairo memes account. Oh, that's Jeremy. <laughs> Tristan was my first patient who became my intern, and then Jeremy was also a patient who became my intern, and now they're both at Palmer. Who was here last time? That was Jeremy. Yeah. That was Jeremy. Nope. I think it was Tristan back then. I wasn't think it? it was Tristan. That sounds familiar. Did he have long hair? No. Football uh, player. Uh, Football no. player. Jeremy. Jeremy. Jeremy's an Air Force. Jeremy's a be a veteran yeah, with Navy really veteran. short hair. Okay, that's I think who it was. Yeah, I think it was. Sure. I think it was Jeremy. I think it was Jeremy actually. That sounds right. You hanging in there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You can you can hammer on me all day. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Hammering Dr. J. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good title for the video. There it is. I was going to put you in yoga pants. Dr. No. J, Dr. J gets hammered. Dr. J in yoga pants. Yeah, well, be, hopefully the snowflakes don't that, know. That's really scary. <laughs> I call them biomechanics pants. <laughs> I was going to wear mine too. <laughs> oh, yeah, that tone on my left side. Well, they're both pretty hypertonous. Yeah. Like you said, leaning over, looking up. Well, and then twisting simultaneously because I work from the left side of the table all the time. Ah. Not a switch hitter? No, not really. Never developed it? Me neither. Just, just didn't. <laughs> Some of my providers can, can you know, chisel with both arms, not me. I'm a right hand only. Yep. And I'm not going to decrease the quality to try to learn the other side and get it up to, yeah. up to par. I just need you to come to Houston more often. Dig, <laughs> dig in you a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> anytime you want. I appreciate that. You and Lice both welcome here anytime you want. We appreciate that. You no, guys are awesome. Absolutely. We're very grateful for your hospitality. Well, and the treatment, of course. Yeah. What do you think of that? <sighs> well, people don't realize how hard we actually work. Yeah, this is manual labor. It is manual labor. Yeah. Just we have air conditioning usually. And we usually get paid better too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Man, you know, there's there's some guys if you work on an oil rig or something like that, those guys make a lot of money. Yeah, that's true. And no debt. Yep. Although you probably didn't have a ton of debt back then, right? From power school? Well, I had my fair share, but I paid off my student loans within six months after graduation. Wow. Yeah, power school is really expensive. Yeah, now. it's like hundred and twenty or hundred and thirty thousand now, isn't it? Holy cow, yeah. On the loans? Yeah. Well, 
I think my roommate from Cairo College had like 300,000. Is that right? Well, at 6.8% or something? Wow. Gee, when I went to school, interest rate was like 10%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's back in the Jimmy Carter days. Yeah, but now you can get a, a loan for anything for like 2% other, than, other than school. Yeah. You can get a car loan for 2% now. Yeah, but I don't know how much student loans are going for now. I think it's about 4 or 5%. Isn't it? Yeah, probably. But still, I mean, it's kind of a scam if it's twice the. Yeah, you know, I've had to ask Trish in Germany. Five times the, the actual national yeah. interest rate. So generally when we're doing this, I don't really ever do the spine itself. So we do ribs, yeah. scapula, you know. The only thing we'll ever really touch is maybe the pelvis and occasionally maybe the atlas. But. Well, what a lot of people don't understand though is that these muscles and ligaments attach from spinous to spinous, from spinous to spinous. Are you okay? I'm okay. Are you sure? Yeah. What happened? <laughs> oh, I tripped on the oh, knee no. chest table. <laughs> Are you sure you're good? Yeah, I'm okay. good. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. And I almost laid this. <laughs> you know, so the anatomy and physiology of all this is you have to know what inside and out to hit the right muscle groups and hit the right spots in between the transverse and spinous connections. Yep. Got an animal tip eye from your yep. bears. That's right. Mm -hmm. My right side's pretty tight too.